Let us understand Jensen's Alpha with an example. Let us consider a mid cap stock. Over the last one year, let us assume that it has given 15% return. The beta of the stock is 1.2. So what is beta? Beta measures market risk. That is, it measures fluctuation in stock prices in relation to market movements. Higher the beta, higher is the risk. Returns of the corresponding mid cap index. Let us denote it as RM, that is returns from the market as 13 percentage. Returns from treasury bills over the last one year, let us denote it as RF, risk free returns. It is taken as 6 percentage. Now, investors require a minimum rate of return from the stock to compensate for the risk they take. So how to calculate the minimum return that the stock should deliver in order to compensate for the risk? We have a formula for that. Let us see the formula. See the minimum required rate of return is given by RF risk free return plus beta multiplied by RM market return minus RF risk free return. Now let us substitute the values. See here, we get the answer as 14.4 percentage. So what does, what does this mean? It means that the stock should deliver at least 14.4 percentage return for the risk it has. So investors should get at least 14.4 percentage return. Only then this stock is viable. Any return less than 14.4 4 percentage is not viable and it should not be considered for investment. So the stock should give 14.4 and above that. Now see the case study here. Our stock has given 15 percentage return. It means that actually our stock has given more than the required rate of return. Now what is alpha? Let us see alpha in the coming part. Jensen's alpha is given by the formula. Jensen's alpha is equal to stock return minus required rate of return. In our case, the stock return is 15 percentage and the required rate of return is 14.4 percentage. So Jensen's alpha is 0.6 percentage. Here it is a positive alpha. It means that the stock is a outperformer. It has done well when compared to the benchmark or the market. Stock return is greater than required rate of return. There can be a possibility of negative alpha too. Let us see that also. See here, everything remains same. I have changed only one value. That is the returns of mid cap index. That is the market return is changed to 14 percentage. Now see the required rate of return. Now the required rate of return becomes 15.6 percentage. However, our stock has given only 15 percentage. So what is the alpha value now? The alpha value is minus 0.6 percentage. It denotes negative alpha. It is underperformer. That is stock return is less than required rate of return. So this stock should not be considered for investment. Now we can extend this concept to mutual funds also. We can calculate alpha for mutual fund schemes and uh, we can rate the fund manager performance. Positive alpha schemes are better, isn't it? So alpha in case of mutual fund schemes talk about fund manager performance. Now the another question is, do we have mutual fund schemes which pick stocks based on alpha? Yes, we do have mutual fund schemes which pick stocks based on alpha. Let us see that also. See here alpha based factor funds. These are the funds available in the market as of now. So the first three funds, ICICI, Prudential, Nifty, Alpha, Low Volatility, 30 ETF, and then Nippon India, Nifty, Alpha, Low Volatility, 30 Index Fund. The first three funds, they invest in 30 stocks based on Alpha and Low Volatility. That is, they pick high Alpha and low standard deviation stocks. And see the fourth one, Kotak Nifty Alpha 50 ETF. Okay, so they invest in 50 high alpha stocks picked from a universe of top 300 
stocks based on market capitalization so these are the funds available in the market as of now so this is about jensen alpha and the funds available in the market 